She is now beginning to strain. See how that tail comes out? That is a bit straining. There she goes, straining now. The puppy is going to come and I am ready with a towel. Give her some encouragement. Good girl. Here comes the puppy now. Now, I just take the puppy firmly with the towel. I do not grab it. I do not pull it. I just ease the puppy out gently so that it doesn't fall onto the paper and hurt itself. There, now the whole puppy is out. I am now fishing for the afterbirths and here comes the placenta and afterbirth hole. I'm taking the puppy out of the bag first around the nose, break the bag around the puppy's nose, dry it off with the towel, cut the cord with the scissors, make sure there is two or three inches of cord left, cut it two or three inches away from the puppy. There's the afterbirth, I wrap up the afterbirth and remove it and rub the puppy dry and let the bitch lick the clean puppy. Now there's many schools of thoughts about letting a bitch eat the afterbirth. I have found that if bitches eat the afterbirths, they get shocking diarrhea and the diarrhea dehydrates the bitch and knocks the milk supply back. There is a belief that there is some hormone content and nutritional content in the afterbirths. I personally do not believe this. I find that my bitches are far brighter and happier if I remove the afterbirth. They then pay more attention to the puppy. And if they're really hungry, they will eat a nutritious meal and they do not get diarrhea in this way. There is the puppy on a nice clean towel presented to the bitch for her to lick and stimulate it. It is most important to dry the puppy off very thoroughly so that the body temperature of the puppy does not drop too much in the first 10 minutes of its life. Now the puppy is dry and I encourage it to have its first feed. Some puppies will feed immediately but others you have to encourage them or if they're sleepy and tired through a long birth, let them sleep for half an hour or so and then try to give them a feed afterwards. This little puppy is in fact sucking quite strongly just a few minutes after its birth and there's mum cleaning it up. I then wrap up a hot water bottle in a towel and place it close to the bitch's udder. You will notice this little puppy is now snuggled up between the hot water bottle and under the bitch's front legs. It is fine for them to have a sleep like this between puppies. However, when the bitch gets restless again, it is best to place the puppy in a basket with a heated pad in it. And make sure the bitch knows where her puppy is then she'll be quite happy to settle back again and concentrate on having her next puppy. Oh, the water bag broke. See the squirt come out? This puppy will come out without all its membranes because the water bag burst inside her which is not unusual. I am waiting with a towel, ready to steady the second puppy as it's born. Note, I don't pull the puppy, I am just steadying it, that's all, because in this case, it would get jammed against the whelping box if I wasn't steadying it. I'm now pulling the afterbirth out. I take the membrane away from the puppy's nose so that it can take its first breath and mum is assisting me by licking the puppy. I remove the membrane right from around the puppy's body 
and dry its nose really well so that it can start breathing. The excess membrane is now to be cut off, leaving two to three inches of umbilical cord behind. The cut is made two or three inches away from the puppy's body and you squeeze the umbilical cord remaining also. Somebody handing me a nice clean towel, make sure that puppy is quite dry. Hey. It's a good idea to offer the bitch a drink of water between whelpings. A lot of bitches won't get out of the whelping box and go to the water bowl themselves. Unless they have sufficient water to drink, they won't come into milk properly. So it's important to encourage the bitch to drink. Good girl. She is now straining again. Here comes puppy number three. Complete with afterbirth. As before, I dry the puppy's nose first. Then I squeeze the umbilical cord, then cut it. Let's have a closer look at the afterbirth. You can see how large it is, almost as large as the puppy. Many people have mistaken the afterbirth for a dead puppy, but you have seen the puppy alive and well, and this is just the afterbirth. When you consider the size of the afterbirth, you can see why I recommend it be removed immediately and not be eaten by the bitch. Here you can see the mother leaving the afterbirth alone and just attending to the puppy. She is doing the umbilical cord beautifully. See how she's chewing it? The blood vessels within the umbilical cord are like a spring and the mother's chewing stimulates their closure. This is an excellent example of how a bit should attend to the umbilical cord. She's doing a fabulous job on that. She's doing a fabulous job on that. What a good girl. The bitch's constant licking of the puppy stimulates it. It is ideal if the bitch will attend to the puppy like this and you should never interfere with the bitch's natural maternal instincts as long as she's not too rough. If she pulls at the cord excessively, it arguably causes an umbilical hernia. And now Robin has relaxed between whelpings with two puppies feeding and the third asleep between her legs. Good girl. She is now straining again. You can see some of the muck coming away from her vulva. If you watch carefully between the anus and the vulva, you can see the puppy coming through the cervix. These are very hard strains, but here it comes. 
You can see it dilating. The little puppy will pop through any minute. Here it is, back feet first. And this little puppy is complete with afterbirth. Wipe its nose first. Remove the bag from around its body. Cut the cord, dispose of the afterbirth and give the pup to mum. That is the sort of rough behaviour that I believe can cause an umbilical hernia. It's not too difficult to encourage the bitch to attend to the puppy gently yet thoroughly. And the tail comes up once again. There she goes straining again and the muck is still coming away but she's giving a really good strain. The puppy is on its way and it's just as well I'm there with a towel. It's a long way for that puppy to fall onto the bottom of the box. So I hold the puppy firmly in the towel and try and get as much of the membrane away afterwards. Dry the puppy's nose first. It's a good strong puppy, that one is. And here are five little puppies having a long sleep between whelps. It's good, she's hurried up now. Although she's straining again, the strains are not hard. Suddenly, she gets up and there is a tiny puppy lying lifeless in the box. I immediately pick it up and rub it with a towel. It appears to be quite dead. Come on, come on, come on, she's not breathing. Come on. There she goes. Good girl. Good girl, come on. She's breathing now, I think. All right, all right. All right. There she goes. Yes, that's right. No afterbirth, no nothing, just the... Come on, little girl. Come on, come on. Come See on. her gasping? No, it's away. Come on. Wakey, wakey. Oh, sniffly, sniffly. Sniffly, sniffly. Oh, something's wrong. The bitch jumped out of the box. This brown discharge is most unusual and probably means trouble. The bitch knew there was something wrong. The birth was also very painful. Oh, it's, the bag's broken. I have to. I'll have to eat it, Daniel. You won't be able to. It's a trouble. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Know what to do? It's very small, and it's uh, and it's. Uh... And it's uh, it, it's. See how it's gasping? I really don't like that. I don't know whether it's gonna. It's very sensitive, so I think I'll just get a new towel. It's alive. All right. 
And it was so dead, I'm absolutely astounded. Anyway, here's a little man. Look. You have a look at it. She is not attending to this puppy with her usual vigour. Cord doesn't need doing it. Needs really good stimulation. And usually the bitch knows best. I would have really thought that was dead. Seems to be fine now. But you never know whether they're going to live or not. But it's worth bringing them round and giving them the chance. Good girl, good girl. And probably the bitch will be right. What a good girl. This puppy's now about five minutes old and you can see it's still gasping so there's no point in offering it any food. In fact, I've, I really revived it. I rubbed, I've rubbed it for five minutes. Or the better part thereof, I'm really surprised that it's even, it's even breathing. So it's extremely small for an adult. I've weighed it already. It's only six and a half ounces. So I'll be surprised if we raise it at all. And we didn't. After that unfortunate drama, an hour or so has elapsed, and she is now straining again. As she has had several pups, the poor bitch is getting tired. It is most important to keep her comfortable and keep her strength up. So, in the meantime, I have taken her out to the toilet and given her some light, nutritious food. However, she is straining and straining. A little bit more. It's not there yet. Poor girl. You must not let this go on for more than an hour without seeking veterinary advice. There are many reasons why a bitch strains and strains without producing a puppy. A puppy could be stuck or fails to present because of some complication. An hour of straining like this is long enough. After that your bitch could become exhausted or develop uterine inertia which could spell disaster for the remainder of the litter. Your vet should be able to correctly assess the situation, but don't let this straining go on for longer than an hour without producing a puppy. Just let it come out of that. Cord's done. No afterbirths, no nothing. So its nose was just coming out, you see. Just just its nose. It's obviously the bag broke before. Yeah. 
Well, all right, now it did the cords all done and everything. You'd be a little bit stressed, little man. And so is the bitch. But fortunately, I was able to encourage her to drink a large bowl of water. And then she happily settled down and fed her puppies. Nursing her puppies like this stimulates the uterus to contract. Mm, she's having this one real hard. The puppies are now safely back in the basket and Robin is straining again. Must be it now. Here it comes. Come on. Oh, a big puppy. And often with a bigger puppy, there is a lot more straining like this. This puppy is fine. It's breathing and wriggling right away. I've found that by massaging her gently on her sides, when she's almost empty, this can actually help her bring the last puppies down. She's obviously not got too many more left there. And when she starts to strain again, a bit of a massage on her side can encourage those last puppies down. And the external massage obviously helped her because here she is now straining quite hard. Very hard, in fact. And here comes the puppy now, in its bag. I'm ready with the towel as before and make sure the puppy is perfectly dry. And for whelping over, five puppies feeding and four asleep. Here we are on the other side with the other four pup the other four puppies. After the whelping is over, the bitch will appreciate you making her comfortable by washing all that muck off her, not with soap, but just with clean, warm water. Let's have a feel of the first off. Had the last one just two hours ago. Good. Just want to make sure that she's empty. Right, well. I know the problems that retain whelps can be. Well, we've got a, an empty uterus. There are no pups there. It's very clearly felt here at the moment. The Good. uterus is contracting down. There are no more pups inside. Oh, that's good. I wasn't looking forward to another caesarean with the last puppy. You didn't want any more pups or any more caesareans. No. Let's have a look, see. Let's have a look at that discharge and see what's coming away. Oh, quite a lot of green discharge there. That means there's still membranes uh, inside. So retained membranes there. We'll have to make sure those go out. Yes, there's one. Three puppies came out without the afterbirth. Oh, well, they've got to come away or else we're going to have problems. Yes. Poor right. girl. Right, let's come back and have a look at the milk supply. What have we got? She's well filled up. Yes, she's been feeding all the those. puppies well. Has she? Yes, yes, they're all, they're, all very, they're all very strong, I'm pleased with them. Oh, milk in all those glands. Yes, she's always been a good mum. This good. is her third litter. Is it? Tremendous. Yes. And how many did she have the previous litters? Twelve and 
11. Oh, we'll have so, 12 this time. Oh, we'll have a better Christmas dinner, <laughs> won't we? I won't have to bottle them, hopefully. And let's have some injections for her. Three injections. Calcium, soluble calcium. What's the calcium do? Calcium helps to stimulate the uterus to push out the rubbish that's still there. All muscles need calcium oh, for yes. their function. And the uterus and is a muscle, of course. The uterus is a muscle and it's been working pretty hard over the last few hours. Yes, it certainly has. The whopping's taken about 10 hours in all. Has it? Yes. More than nine pups. The calcium I'm feeding her doesn't do the same job. No, because it's not strictly from a calcium point of view or a, uh, a feeding to the pups the calcium point of view that we're using it. We're using the calcium as an immediate, in other words, a soluble stimulant to the, the uterus. Mm -hmm. Pituitrin or oxytocin, pituitrin some people call it, is the brand name. And that and stimulates the uterus too to get out the afterbirth. And that's the hormone that pushes the, makes the uterus work, particularly if that calcium's already working on it. And last but not least, the long-acting penicillin. Just in case of infection. That's right, sometimes with the remainder of the rubbish that's inside there, the remainder of the membranes, we'll have um, a little bit of infection involved with the potential for infection. We don't want any problems there. Right, let's have three needles. Oh, poor girl. Now, the first one, which is the biggest one, doesn't sting. Oh, poor girl, that away. That's a girl. It has to go in very slowly because it's such a big one. Poor girl. Oh, we've got a little bit there. Right. Isn't she good girl? You're a good girl. Just half a shake. Now the second one is the pituitrin. It stings sometimes. Oh, and she didn't flinch, but quite often they'll well, flinch because she it hurts. A good girl. We'll give and last but not rub. least, long acting penicillin. Right. Might be a good idea to feed her some yogurt. Never goes amiss. She's amazed. had the penicillin to counteract and put the um, little bacteria back, which helps the to digest the milk. Last but not least, let's have a look at those pups. She's okay. She's still got um, discharge coming away there. Mm -hmm. We'll have to um, make sure that there's none of that green colour coming yeah. away. Tomorrow, if there is, I'd like to see her again okay. if she's free. And particularly if you see those three sets of membranes come out, tremendous. Okay. If there's any, if you've got any doubts or there's any green, what some of ever. There'll be discharge. Yeah. There might be pink or there might be... Red. Uh, ready colour. Black? Black up to black, but when you smear it out, if the black looks red or the black looks green, those are the two differences. If that smeared out black, I'll just show you, Mr. Harvey. If that smeared out black looks red, because at the moment it just looks black. But if you smear it out, you'll sometimes, I'm sorry, it always gets messy, <laughs> you'll find that it gets. There's a, almost a reddy colour. Yes, right. But then you see a touch of green up the top. We'll have another look soon. And if you've got green, which we have, and you smear it out, that means that most probably either membranes, total membranes, or uh, part of membranes. There's something deteriorating. So that will certainly go um, bad when it's done. Mm. Okay, and I wouldn't be a bad idea to take a temperature in the morning anyway, just to watch what's going temperatures on. Temperatures are very important. Uh, temperatures are very important because uh, you'll always have a slight rise of temperature after whelping, or you'll often have a slight rise of whelping, uh, temperature after whelping. But um, uh, if she has a considerable rise of temperature, that's when we've got problems.
okay, I'll bring really The main thing is as long as she keeps on being bright and happy, feeding the puppies well, the puppies are growing, and they're not complaining. No, they're good. Right you are. Let's have right. you down on the floor, my girl. That's the little Robin. Let's have a look at these pups. How many have we got? Nine altogether? Nine. Good. Gee, they're nice and warm. Uh, what have you got in here? You've got a, an electric blanket. Yes. Yeah. Good, with the cord there, that's keeping them warm. That's a special little pet blanket I had made years and years ago. It's no, been very handy. That's tremendous. You've got to have something, even on a hot day or a warm day, you've got to have something to keep them warm because they've got no temperature regulating mechanism going yet. Yeah. So either your electric pad or else your hot water bottle. Yeah. Very important. And plenty of toweling as you've got here uh, for them to snuggle into and stay warm. Let's have a look at these pups. No cleft pallets. Good. We're fortunate with this breed. I have seen it just once, mm -hmm. but that's all. Mm -hmm. With the um, but cleft palates, of course, oh, are a pro can be a, a big problem. problem. Yes. Now, they've all got full bellies. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you can see that they've had a good feed from mum. No She's a pig, course. this particular little one. Is she? Yeah. Yes. She's right. Good girl. Oh, All those cords have dried up fast, it doesn't take yes. long. I always like to see them drying up fast, I always think it's a sign of thriving. Well, these are all thriving. A little bit smaller one, that one. Yeah. She'll do well. I think that might have been just about the last one yeah. born. I don't think she was born very long ago. Yeah. Hello, little man. Good hard droppings I've got. Yes. No diarrhea. No diarrhea, yep. And we don't want any. Oh, good. You're just about round, I think. He's got a bit of white down his chest, more than I like to see on an Airedale, but it'll often disappear. Well, he's a good, healthy little pup. That's the main thing there. Mm. Good. Well, that's that's, the, last, that's the last one. Good. Good. Right. Right okay. here. Well, they can all go home. And I'll call you tomorrow if the discharge has got any greenness. Yes, for sure. If there's Come any on, green Robin. there, we want to see her very definitely. Okay, then. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time once again. Good, Mr. Mrs. Harvey. We'll right. see her in two or three days' time for those tiles and new floors. Okay. okay. Right you are. Good. Bye-bye. Thanks very much.